Good morning, everyone. My name is Father Ron Schock, and I am blessed and honored to be present here along with Deacon Greg to celebrate uh, Mildred's funeral. We want to extend our most heartfelt and deepest sympathies to the whole family uh, and know that, uh, uh, that you will be in our prayers now and in the days and months and years to come. Uh, on behalf of the parish, Deacon Greg has something uh, he'd like to present to you. In our, in our parish, we have women that knit uh, baptismal shawls, wedding shawls, and funeral shawls. And so as they knit, they pray for the person, whoever that might be, that will receive it. And so um, on behalf of the parish, uh, we want to extend to, to Judy and to Ken and to Ed and Elaine and Lois our deepest sympathies and all, the, all of Mildred's family, uh, family that they're related to by blood, but also the Frenchtown family. Um, just offer you our extent, extent to you our sympathies, extend to you our prayers for you all in the future. So, but on behalf of, of the parish, Father Tim, all of our staff, we offer this to you and we'll give it to you, Judy. And the idea is, is that Whenever you put this on, whoever might put it on will feel Mildred's hug. Yes, Mildred did hug, I think, sometimes. And uh, it, you'll feel um, God's presence and hug and warmth when you might wear it. So we all have our sympathies on behalf of the parish. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, if you're able, please stand as we sing the opening hymn, Precious Lord. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Mildred died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. As Mildred was clothed with the garment at baptism, we now clothe her body with the garment as she prepares to enter into eternal glory. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your death who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Mildred, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated for our scripture readings. <clears throat> A reading from the book of, of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord is God fr from of old creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary, and his knowledge is beyond scrutiny. He gives power to the faint, abundant strength to the weak. Though young men faint and grow weary, and youth stagger and fall, they that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on eagles' wings, they will run and not grow weary, walk and not grow faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nothing I shall want. Oh. 
from the book of Revelations. I heard a voice from heaven say, write this, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, said the spirit, let them find rest from their labors for their works accompany them. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. 
Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Judy, Ken, Ed, Elaine, Lois, our deepest sympathies. What an aunt that you had in your life. And today we, we gathered together here at All Saints here in New Rig, Ohio. Probably back when I was here in uh, 2003 to 2007, Mildred, this wouldn't have been the church that Mildred would have been wanted to be buried out of. We'll just say it right now, right? <laughs> but a little bit of St. Nicholas is with, with us today as the stained glass, the love of our life, St. Nicholas Church, as well as Our Lady of Consolation. She had a, a dairy... Uh, a great devotion and especially with our Franciscan uh, brothers and priests in Cary. We gather together, as I mentioned, the Mass of Resurrection because we celebrate Mildred's life. We place her casket body in front of the Easter candle, the Easter candle that uh, flame is flickering to remind us of uh, a promise to more than what we experience here on earth, the promise of eternal life. Just next week, we'll be celebrating Holy Week, and we'll go through Good Friday. Remember, Good Friday, darkness fell over the whole land when Jesus was crucified and died on the cross. But that, as Paul Harvey would say, is not the rest of the story. The rest of the story was that on Easter Sunday, Light gave way to darkness. Light came over the, all the world as the light of Christ uh, burst forth from the tomb. And that's at the, at the Easter vigil uh, on Saturday night. We will be uh, outside starting in darkness, but then the light will permeate. Like so many Easter vigils that Mildred helped set up out at St. Nicholas. And then uh, uh, we're reminded that that light, if we follow that light, that light which is Jesus, that we will be led to the gates of the eternal kingdom. There's a, a poem I'd like to share with you. It's entitled The Dash. And I know Mildred heard this a number of times and she told me she wanted to make sure that I read my poem and also uh, sang my song at her funeral. So. Mildred, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. <laughs> the poem goes like this. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth, and now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. 
if we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Mildred Lucille Weeby, April 15th, 1921, dash, March 17th. 2024, less than a month from her 103rd birthday. Not too many people get to say that, to live that long. Mildred, uh, that dash, as the, the poem mentions, says so much about Mildred, whether uh, being raised by her mom and dad, Ed and Clara, and having uh, three girls in the family. Poor Ed probably had all that female presence around him, and yet uh, he was able to be spoiled and, and cared for. Then uh, uh, with that came uh, being able to, uh, as Mildred grew, she graduated from St. Nicholas School. Back when St. Nicholas had a school, she went through all eight grades as far as she could. From that part, she then uh, uh, went on uh, to work right across the street here at New Riggle Schools. She was uh, worked in the cafeteria. I see many notes and people mentioned, and Judy also mentioned to me about how many people remember uh, Mildred as the cafeteria lady, as the one who would help serve all that delicious school food to all the kids as they came through the line. And I suspect Mildred always had a line or something to say, and if the kids tried to take too much, I'll bet you Mildred gave them the old what for, you know, like Mildred could. Mildred uh, worked uh, for the schools for 27 years. What a blessing. Being able to... Uh, then what her, her life devotion was truly to God. She was a woman of faith. Her faith meant the world to her. And I don't think no one could ever debate that thought. And I, uh, I know Mildred uh, uh, was cared for St. Nicholas so much. She only lived right down uh, the street from uh, St. Nicholas. Mildred would be opening and closing the church. She would be taking care, you know, of the linens. She would be taking care of anything that needed to be mended. Um, when I was here, I remember one time uh, uh, Jacob Gordon, he was a seminarian at the time, and, and Jacob uh, he gets a hold of me and says, Father Ron, uh, Mildred, she fell out here at the church. And so there she was trying to water plants and do her thing, and she fell off the step. And we got, uh, got her taken care of and mended. So Jacob had the idea that we needed to take a kitty out to uh, Mildred. And so, and Judy reminded me, squeaky. Squeaks uh, was the cat that uh, she had for a long time. Every time I would talk to her long after I left the parishes, uh, she would mention Squeaks. And, and, uh, but where, where did we find her? She was, work, she was hard at work in church. Uh, Mildred not only worked in the interior of the church, but the outside church as well, building up whether it's the religion program, the festival, uh, making noodles. I know there's, how many people in here helped Mildred make noodles over the years? Raise your hand. 
Don't be bashful. I can see some of you out there that's not raising your hands, all right? Because I know you help bake noodles. And, uh, but Mildred, she would recruit her uh, group of people to help make noodles for the festival. Mildred was, uh, uh, you know, when she asked you to do something, or maybe the better words, told you to do something, you know, you knew how to respond to Mildred, right? And uh, uh, she uh, had this way about her. And you knew always where Mildred stood. She didn't have a poker face, did she? She would not have been able to play poker very well because you knew where she stood. And, uh, uh, but that was good. At least for me, it was good. I, I enjoyed working with her. Uh, she was uh, 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 truly a joy and a challenge at times, but that was, that was okay. Um, Mildred uh, truly lived out the gospel call. You know, our gospel today focused on the Beatitudes, an attitude of being, of living our life as a, in a Christian Catholic way. And uh, uh, one of the things that, that really popped up to mind was, blessed are they who mourn. Mildred and, and, the, and the funeral luncheon committee and the way Mildred would take care of planning the funerals and taking care of people who, uh, uh, suffered loss, that was close to her heart, being able to, uh, to care for the people. And, and that's what we do today here. We gather and mourn for Mildred and the, for the person she was for us. Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And if we yet follow him, we'll be led to the kingdom of God. you believe that Mildred followed the Lord? you believe that Mildred followed the Lord in the best way that she could, the best way that she knew? I've seen her many times praying in church by herself, and I snuck up, snuck in on her. I always liked to do that. It always kind of scared her, but she enjoyed it. I knew she was a woman of, of faith, of prayer. Um, Mildred, uh, uh, in her faith that she not only uh, lived it out through her prayers, but she lived it out through her actions and by how she cared for people. And that's what Jesus calls us to as well. Many of you have received the different items that maybe Mildred either quilted or crocheted or a, a rug that she weaved. Uh, uh, she, um, those things will be great memories for you as you look upon them and say, Aunt Mildred made those, or Great Aunt Mildred made those items. Her plants and flowers, uh, uh, she truly cared for God's creation. That Franciscan spirit really uh, connected with Mildred because. Uh, she would care for God's creation, and especially, as we mentioned earlier, her kitties. You saw the picture of Tabby that was with her there in the casket. That was her dear kitty. One of my, uh, uh, we messaged back and forth on Messenger, uh, and Mildred texted me that she was, uh, had fell and had went to the hospital over in Tiffin. And... <coughs> So that day I went over to Tiffin to visit her at the hospital and she was telling me uh, about what happened. But you know what the main thing was she was worried about? It was Tabby. She was worried about how her kitty was doing. And, uh, and then later on, two days later, she texted me and said that she wasn't going to be able to go home, that she needed to go to Good Shepherd. And that's where she... she stayed. I don't think that ever became home for her. She was there because she needed to be there. But her home, her heart, is in Frenchtown. And now I sure pray that when, as she enters the gates of the heavenly kingdom, that she, all her heart's desires are fulfilled. 
maybe it's uh, the gates of heaven were you know, paved with little kitties, you know, as she was passing through. Maybe there was an image of St. Nicholas in the background. Maybe she saw many of your faces. But most of all, she saw the people who've gone before her, her mom and dad, her sisters, her uh, nephew, her, uh, her friends that she made, countless friends over the years. So my friends, as, as we continue celebrating this Mass of Resurrection, may we reflect on ourselves. Are we following Jesus? Are we following Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life? Are we reflecting his love in everything that we say and do? That's the challenge. That's the challenge that Mildred strived to live in her life. That's the challenge for each and every one of us here today. So may God bless us, continue to guide us on that path that leads to eternal life, where we'll see Mildred and all of our loved ones who have gone before us at the gates of heaven. Can I walk you to the gates of heaven? May I walk along your side? It is hard for me to leave you. It is sad to say goodbye. As I watch you take your last breath, his peace comes over you. What seems like the end is only the beginning of life anew. Can I walk you to the gates of heaven? May I walk along your side. It is hard for me to leave you. It is sad to say goodbye. As you pass from earth to heaven, I want to be there by your side. Our love has never been parted until this day so blue. Can I walk you to the gates of heaven? May I walk along your side. It is hard for me to leave you. It is sad to say goodbye. Now, Lord, may I ask you a favor, a favor I cannot repay. May I walk, Mildred, to heaven, to the gates of heaven today. Can I walk you to the gates of heaven? May I walk along your side. It is hard for me to leave you. It is sad to say goodbye. As we approach the gates of heaven, I notice they are open wide, with Jesus and our loved ones waiting to usher you inside. Can I walk you to the gates of heaven? May I walk along your side. It is hard for me to leave you. It is time to say goodbye. Please stand as we place our prayers and petitions before the Lord. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Meldred, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, May she now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Meldred, who ate the body and blood, 
excuse me, for Mildred, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be welcomed to the table of the heavenly feast. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mildred's family, for her nieces and nephews, especially Judy, Edward, Elaine, Lois, and Kenny, great and great, great nieces and nephews, and the wide circle of its extended family and friends, may they be comforted by the knowledge that Mildred is now at peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mildred served as a sacristan at St. Nicholas for many years. In thanksgiving for her great gift of faith and the model that she was to all of us of a good and faithful servant, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mildred lived 102 years on this earth, living most of those years at home with the help and kindness of family and neighbors. In thanksgiving for her great witness of determination and fortitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all present here to worship in faith, that we seek out God's love and mercy, forgiveness and his kindness above anything else, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Ed and Clara Wiebe, Alice LaFountain, Gladys LaFountain, and Stanley Bilski, and all deceased members of the Wiebe and Huffbauer families, may they, Meldred, and all the saints and angels see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister Mildred, cleanse her of her sins, and grant her the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our offertory.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of his angels. For the praise and glory of his name. For all the good and good of all the Holy Church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Mildred, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death so that we might all escape from dying. So that as one man he chose to die so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Remember your servant Mildred, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, strengthen our belief that your Son is risen from the dead. We pray that our servant Mildred will also rise again one day with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Mildred. May our farewell express our affection for her, and may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. as we uh, prepare to exit the church and take Mildred uh, to her final place of rest at St. Nicholas Cemetery. All are invited back to the American Legion to gather to share memories and food and uh, with one another so that the, uh, Mildred will live on in our hearts forever. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Mildred in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Mildred and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and with you and our sister Mildred forever. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. <laughs> 